Chapter 308 A Prepared Magician When Klein looked down again, he could no longer see the strange candle wrapped in human skin. Instead, a faint, slightly sweet scent kept lingering around his nose. Ignoring the Bishop Utrovsky's body that was lying down in a pool of his own blood, he took out his matchbox and lit one matchstick. The blood on the ground disappeared as soon as the spark was produced, and the messy church hall became tidy once again. The gargantuan Utrovsky slowly got up, looked down at Klein, and said with a twisted face, It actually didn't have any effect. It's no wonder that you dare to accept this task. However, this is your misfortune. I didn't actually want to kill you. As he spoke, the candlelight on both sides of the cathedral began to flicker visibly. The entire hall suddenly brightened, but it was mild and not blinding. It was as if the morning sun had just come in. The invisible spirit quickly vanished, and Klein, without a word, threw the match, flexed his cheeks, and simulated a sound. Bang! An invisible air bullet shot out and struck Bishop Utrovsky heavily in the chest, producing a resounding sound. However, the giant bishop had at some point equipped a set of silver armor that covered his entire body. It included gauntlets, breastplates, and a helmet. At that moment, a spiderweb-like crack appeared on the silver metal at his chest, but it didn't completely shatter. It even began to slowly recover. Bang! Bang! Klein produced a series of sounds, creating two air bullets that followed one after the other, sending them towards the enemy's chest in a bid to completely destroy the enemy's defenses with a continuous barrage of attacks. However, he saw that in Bishop Butrovsky's hand was a heavy, wide rapier, looking as if it was condensed from light. Using it, he deftly blocked the two air bullets, producing two sounds which were almost impossible to distinguish. Freak. Utrovsky took one step forward, and the cathedral seemed to shake. At the same time, his two-handed rapier swept down at Klein in a gesture that looked as if it was going to shatter the building. Before the sword arrived, the wind that it carried with it almost caused Klein to lose his balance. Such terrifying power. As this thought flashed through his mind, Klein deftly jumped to the side and bent over, ready to roll on the spot. Bang! The two-handed rapier in Utrovsky's hands smashed into the ground, shattering the stone slabs and causing cracks to spread rapidly in all directions. Screech! He dragged the rapier along the ground as he switched from a vertical slash to a horizontal sweep, causing sparks to fly. This move was meant for opponents who loved to roll. Just as Klein was about to hit the ground, the image of himself being struck by the two-handed rapier appeared in his mind. He quickly swung his arms and reached out with his palms. He lightly pressed and once again leaped into the air. <sighs> the resulting wind blew across the dust on the ground, and the terrifying rapier flattened the nearby pews. However, before Klein could counterattack, the giant bishop chained his attack without any pause. One strike, two strikes, three strikes. Five strikes, six strikes, seven strikes. Utrovsky seemed to possess extremely robust stamina. His unceasing storm-like attacks lasted for dozens of seconds. He used the simplest of sword techniques, slashing vertically, slashing diagonally, sweeping horizontally, thrusting forward, and bashing forward, to demonstrate what was the most effective and reasonable way to deal the most damage, and the range of the two-handed rapier reached a terrifying extent. Klein jumped, rolled, and ran. He didn't have the opportunity to use his powers and appeared rather pathetic. If it wasn't for the matches that he'd thrown ahead of time in different corners of the cathedral and how the candle on both sides of the altar had yet to be extinguished, allowing him to flash, he probably would have been slain by his enemy. As expected of a beyonder job that's adept at combat. No mistakes, no weaknesses. Klein didn't panic because of this. Amidst his rolling and dodging, he constantly looked for any flaws that the enemy had, waiting for his attacks to reach a moderate stage. Finally, he discovered a problem with Utrovsky's sword techniques. The two-handed rapier was too long and too large, and it had an obvious flaw in close combat. With this thought flashing in his mind, Klein took advantage of the rapier's vertical slash to roll forward to the left, and then, with a push of his palm, he quickly rolled to the spot between Utrovsky's legs. As a half-giant who was over 2.2 meters tall, 
Utrovsky would have his legs spread apart from simply standing. His silver crotch was clearly visible. As soon as he rolled over, Klein's left hand reached into his pocket, pulled out a long piece of paper, and turned it into a sharp and hard cane. He then inserted it into the gap at the side of the enemy's crotch, stabbing into the body of the giant bishop. This would be a fatal blow. However, at this moment, his heart trembled. The image of a rapier stabbing down as boundless light, forming a terrifying storm, engulfed his entire body appeared in his mind. A trap. Utrovsky's trap. Klein didn't hesitate. He pressed his right hand down, jumped forward through the gap between the legs of the giant bishop's legs, and arrived behind him. By the time he finished this set of motions, Utrovsky was holding the hilt of his sword with both hands, bending his waist and lifting his sword up to thrust straight down into the stone slab in front of him. With a cracking sound, rays of light surged out of the sword's body like the first rays of dawn. They turned into a hurricane and swept across the surroundings. Without a sound, the stone slab disappeared from where Klein had been, and the earth beneath it became nearly ten centimeters thinner. The silver armor on his legs and crotch was also damaged, shattering inch by inch and revealing his skin. His trap was to sustain damage in exchange for the death of his enemy. At this moment, Klein, who had leaped behind Bishop Utrovsky, finally found an opportunity to counterattack. He twisted his body midair, puffed out his cheeks, and simulated gunshot sounds at the back of his enemy's head. Bang! Bang! Two air bullets hit the back of Utrovsky's head in quick succession, shattering the silver metal in that area and then splitting it into pieces, exposing a completely unprotected area. Klein was about to give him a fatal blow when Utrovsky suddenly strained up, twisted his waist, and violently swept the two-handed rapier backward. The speed was so fast and the attack was so ferocious that Klein seemed unable to dodge it. However, he pulled out a piece of paper from his pocket and placed it in front of his body. Clang! The collision between the sword and the piece of paper produced the sound of metal being struck. The crisp sound of metal striking metal filled the entire cathedral. Klein was sent flying like a tennis ball. The paper in his hand was torn apart, leaving behind only a tiny piece in between his fingers. In midair, he was immediately faced with the violent and swift pursuit of Utrovsky. The situation was precarious. However, he didn't panic in the slightest and only shook his wrist. The tiny piece of paper flew up and a spark rapidly expanded, completely enveloping Klein. Pum! The rapier sliced through the ball of fire, but it didn't cause any damage, only creating a small spark. At the candle on the right side of the cathedral, a faint yellow flame spread out, forming a figure whose face was painted with oil paint. Klein reappeared and pulled out another long strip of paper from his pocket. Pah! With a flick of his wrist, the paper turned into a sturdy whip. The surface of the whip was even burning with scarlet flames. Pa! 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 Klein lashed out at the giant bishop from a distance. However, his weapon quickly disintegrated under the attacks of the two-handed rapier. And that was precisely Klein's goal. With a snap of his fingers, he sent streaks of fire flaring up from the ground, blocking Utrovsky and burning his unprotected legs. The dawn armor's recovery was rather slow. As the tongues of fire leaped upwards, his legs were charred black and a crimson color was seeping up his legs. However, this didn't affect the giant bishop's agility. He let out a low growl, and like a steam train that had finally accelerated to its highest speed, he charged through the flames and appeared in front of Klein. This speed was unbelievably fast. Soon after, the two-handed rapier in Utrovsky's hands cracked, turning into spots of light that swept forth in all directions. Almost instantly, Klein fell into a situation of certain death. The matches he kept on him were ignited, and an intense flame engulfed him. However, this wasn't as fast as the hurricane of light. Just as the scarlet red flame appeared, it was immediately engulfed. Klein's body was torn asunder as it was reduced to shreds, but they ended up losing their thickness and turned into bits of paper. Behind Utrovsky, a column of scarlet red flames flared, and Klein stepped out. He took out a matchbox from his other pocket and threw it at the enemy, as if to ignite all the remaining matches in one go and, through the restraints of the small space, create a reliable explosion. The matchbox was aimed at Utrovsky's lower body which no longer had any protection. Klein raised his right hand and snapped his fingers. 
At the same time, Bishop Butrovsky jumped up on his back, bent his knees, and withdrew his legs. Pah! Accompanied by the snap of his fingers was an unaffected matchbox, but a loud bang. It was an air bullet that accurately tore open the back of Bishop Butrovsky's head which lacked any protection. It was lethal weapon that had been prepared in advance. His skull split open and blood and white bits spurted out. With great difficulty, Utrowski turned his head around and said in a daze, You... The matchbox, that was riddled with holes caused by the hurricane of light, fell to the ground. However, it remained unignited. Klein laughed and replied, <laughs> I've never said that snapping my fingers could only be used to control flames and not shoot out air bullets. Look. He snapped his fingers repeatedly, allowing one air bullet after another to hit Utrovsky in the head, shattering his helmet and cracking his head. Bam! Utrovsky stopped breathing and fell heavily to the ground, shaking the cathedral hall slightly. Pa! Klein turned and snapped his fingers again. The box of matches on the ground exploded, transforming into a scarlet flame that buried Utrovsky's gigantic body. Klein didn't attempt to sense the existence of the candle, but instead, he relied on his own clarity of mind to force himself out of the lowest level of his mind. Behind him, the corpse was wrapped in scarlet flames as the world around him disintegrated bit by bit.